hello everyone welcome to my youtube channel so in this video we will look at the limit uh, to infinity that's the limit where your x is going to infinity okay so um, first of all we should note that uh, if we are given for example a fraction 1 all over let's say 10 so you see that this is going to give you 0 0.1 as you keep increasing the value of the denominator let's say up to 1 million so so you see that this is going to give you 0 0.0000000005 and all of that so as the denominator is increasingly you know becoming larger and larger your value is go going towards zero so the implication is that if you have one all over infinity that this is actually the limit as one as s goes to infinity and when you have uh, your denominator as x here so this is actually going to give you zero that is that your denominator is approaching zero uh, sorry it's approaching infinity your value of that fraction will be reducing towards zero so the limit is equal to zero so in general actually when you have anything divided by infinity is actually equal to zero whatever that is divided by infinity will definitely give you zero and of, co of course we can see this from uh, the concept of anything divided by zero for example x over zero is infinity so if you turn this this way so you see that anything now divided by infinity will give you zero and also anything multiplied by infinity if you multiply 5 by infinity it is still going to give you infinity because infinity means something very large and you are now multiplying it again by 5 so that will give you positive infinity so and that's applicable to negative you can also have negative infinity so if we multiply negative infinity by let's say 10 now that will also give you big negative infinity and so on and so forth so it's important that we take note of this and anything plus infinity <clears throat> for example x plus infinity is still infinity because infinity is very large so if you add something to it you are actually increasing it and so and um if you now have anything minus infinity of course that will give you negative infinity it is still very large and it is still infinity all right so now that is important to us in this evaluation of limits of this sort so what are we going to do so we have an example here it says that we should evaluate this limit of x squared plus 3x plus 2 all over this as s goes to infinity so whenever you are giving such limits what you would need to do is just check for the x that has the highest power in either the numerator or the denominator use that x value to divide every single term in the particular function that you are giving so what i mean by this is that this is going to give us x to infinity of so the x with the highest power here is x squared so i'll use x squared to divide every term here both in the numerator and in the denominator so if x squared divides x I'm going to have 1 there plus if x squared divides this I'm going to have 3x over uh, maybe we should write it 3x all over x squared and then plus this is going to now give us 2 all over x squared all over now in the denominator x squared divide x squared you have 1 minus 2x all over x squared then plus 7 all over x squared so from here what do we have now you see that we're going to have the limit as x goes to infinity of this is one that we have here then here x will cancel the square so you will just have plus three over x and then here you will still have your two all over x squared all over now here you will have one here x will cancel square you will have minus 2 all over x and then plus 7 all over x squared okay and that's going to give us uh, from here now now at this point when you have done this you can now de uh, make your substitution of x as infinity okay so what does that mean now now the reason why we needed to do this is so that 
you see that your x is now in the denominator of some numbers, both in the numerator and in the denominator. And the reason is so that by the time you now make that substitution, when the, uh, the infinity divides anything, you will get zero, and that leaves the equation, and you will get your solution. Okay, so that's going to give us now 1 plus 3 over infinity plus 2 all over infinity squared, of course, is going to be infinity, and that's all over 1 minus 2 over infinity plus 7 all over infinity squared, which is infinity. All of these uh, values divided by infinity will now give us 0. This is 0, this is 0, and this is 0. So what you just have left here is 1 over 1, and that's simply equal to 1. So in, a, in that case, whenever you have any function this way, and you are asked to find to evaluate it to infinity, just look for the coefficients of the x values with the highest uh, power, and then just divide those two. That will give you the required solution. Like ordinarily, what we would have done here is look for the coefficient here, which is 1, divided by the coefficient here which is one and that will give us one so because the rest will turn to zero example two now in example two here let's look at it it says that we should also evaluate this now you can see that uh, in this case here we have limit of 10x minus 2 all over the uh, 3x plus x squared as s goes to infinity sorry i didn't put it here okay so now if you use the first approach i use divide everything by infinity sorry by the highest power which is x squared you are going to have the limit of x squared divide this will give you 10 over x x squared divide this will give you 2 all over x squared and that's over x squared divide 3x will give you x 3 over x. x squared divide this will give 1. So as x goes to infinity. Now if you substitute as infinity, you are going to have 10 over infinity, which is 0. 2 all over infinity, which is 0. This over infinity is equal to uh, 0 also. Then plus what you have here is 1. And that's, <clears throat> that's going to give you 0 all over 1, which is actually equal to 0. And if you use the approach where I said we should take the, the, the coefficient of the highest power. Now, the x squared is not in the numerator. So the meaning is that the coefficient is actually 0 squared, 0x zero squared. So if you pick that coefficient, which is 0, divide it by the coefficient here, which is 1, that will give you 0 over 1, which is simply equal to 0. So you would save yourself the stress of doing all of this. And finally, for the third example here, we are just going to use that second approach. So the limit that we have there, the highest power here is 3, and the coefficient in the numerator is minus 8. So we have minus 8 all over. The coefficient here is 7. So we have minus 8 over 7 as a solution to that limit. If you still take this process, you will get this solution. Right, and that's where we will end it in the video. Kindly subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, we will see you in our next video. Share our YouTube video and the, and the link also. Bye.